Okay, we're live now. Hello, welcome everybody. Hi. It's me and Cassie again. Yeah. <laughs> Cassie much, moments. Much fewer people than the last stream I was on. <laughs> That's the most people I've ever <laughs> yeah. been live with before. Wow. Sure. <laughs> that Among Us stream was great. Also, if, yeah, uh, it was so fun. Currently, I'm waiting both for people to arrive and also for Steam to uh, to load up so that I can open. I have a friend request on Steam. Not sure, who this person is? Let me take a look. I have a matching profile picture, animated profile picture with... Oh, I know who this is. It's Violet. I should have known because the username was just Violet. <laughs> <laughs> who else would it be that I know other than Violet? <laughs> well, my most recent games that I've played on Steam are Undertale, Slap City, and Among Us. Wow. That's a group of games. Now it's going to be Slap City, Among Us, and Rain World. Yeah. <laughs> and Garden Gnome. And Garfield. Racing. Yeah, and Garden Gnome. Are they going to update the Garfield kart racer to put Chris Pratt in it? Yep. <laughs> gonna be in there. They're going to stick him in there. Wow. Just like they updated 3D All-Stars to have the Nintendo 64 controller support. Yeah. Hey, you gotta stay here. current. You gotta get with the program. Dang, I've really played a lot of games since Rain World. I played Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Little Nightmares, Sonic Lost World, Soma, Amnesia, Undertale, Slap City, and Among Us. Damn, Undertale and I don't, I don't play games on Steam very often, so that's how you know it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Read a lot of Rain World on their wish list. My Undertale girlfriend. Hey. Being overloaded. What do you mean? Probably because I was clicked out of the window. I can't. It can't be overloaded. All I'm streaming is a little. Bug. Not dropping any frames. The overloaded encoding means. Just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to close all my windows and let it just be rain world. Audio glitch? Is that what the overloaded encoding means? Are you still there, Cassie? Hi. Hello. These audio glitches are not making me happy. That's unfortunate. Is it good now, Sasha? I hope. Okay. I'm really sorry about that. I don't know why that's happening on the stream lately. And by lately, I mean the last two days. The exterior, cycle 82. I don't remember where we were. <laughs> I think we just barely made it to a new place. Last time, I, last time we played.
Oh, we're still in here, huh? Yeah, I have some bombs. Yum, yum, some bombs. Oh, I died immediately. Great work, bug cat. What if, what if Ellie was eating some bombs? That would probably be bad for my health. Why? Because it's bombs. What's wrong with bombs? They explode and hurt people. Yeah, that time that's I scared it away with the bombs. What do you mean that's, that's rude, rude to, to say? say? Yeah, there's bombs right there that can hear you. Yeah, and one of them just exploded and hurt somebody. It was a lizard. Hurted the lizard. Yeah, well, I'm a lizard, and I think bombs are You're okay. You're a lizard? Yeah. Cass Cassie and Arrow moments? Yeah, I'm a lizard, and I think bombs are just okay. So okay. Clearly, you, you, that lizard doesn't speak for all lizards. Well, uh, clearly. Yeah. Oh wait, clearly. that's the room that I could never climb up. I was really bad at trying to climb up, so I don't want to go that way. I want to go up. Up, up, and away. Up. What am I doing? Up. Go up. Little bug cat. You ever tell a little bug cat to go up? I sure do. All the time, and they never fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you ever told a bug cat to go up, Sasha? Yeah, have you, Sasha? Or should I say Sasha? Wow, it just gave- what? The big tentacle monster just gave me an elevator ride. Oh, that's very kind. Yeah, it just pulled me up here where I needed to go. That's very kind. It truly is. I Did you it say was so nice. thank you? Yes, thank you. Good. Sasha says no comment about if she's told the bughead to go up. That's pretty sus, Sasha. Sasha. Oops. That's a Sasha moment. Yeah. Can't believe that the tentacle monster was friendly to me. Oh, it's looking for me. Knows I'm in the tube. Just fell over. Makes weird tentacle noises. Weird squishy noises, I should say. Oops. That time it was less helpful. On the lowest symbol. <laughs> Great. Great work. This is how Rain World streams always start, especially when it's been a while. Wow, it didn't even flinch from the bomb. It went into the safe hole. I don't like that. It shouldn't go in the safe hole. Yeah, never. Sometimes this game is a little frustrating because it's hard to get past the creatures. You just kind of have to sit around and wait a yeah, lot. Yeah, definitely. A lot takes of the time. Patience. It's a patience baby's game. I am making a school. Nice. It's funny out of yeah. context. It just sounds like you're a little baby playing with some toys. Yeah, 
I am. I'm making a school. Yeah, and then I come over and you've just got like, um, like a pillow on the floor. And there's like yeah. some Legos on it. Not even put yeah. together, they're just sitting on the pillow. Yeah, I'm making a school, you know, don't judge. <laughs> You have like a like a half eaten slice of pizza. Yeah, don't judge. <laughs> and you've got some chips and sprite. I said don't judge. I'm not judging, I'm just I'm just saying what you have. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were judging my way of expressing myself creatively. <laughs> your your finger painting. Yeah. <laughs> Finger painting is a very baby activity. It really is. <laughs> Except for the only time I did finger painting was in high school. Painting class. That was a thing we did one time. Damn. Oh, oh. I don't think I participated in it though because I didn't want to get my hands messy. Oh, that tracks. <laughs> That's something that I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember actually doing the finger painting. Here we go. Do you want to eat a fruit? You know, it's very unusual that all the fruits in this game are blue, considering how rare blue things to eat are in real life. Oh, true. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> Apparently there's people who find, well, apparently blue food is uncommon because people find it revolting in some way. Like somebody said that they made blue oatmeal for a friend, um, just like as a funny thing to do. And they couldn't eat it because even though it was the same exact flavor and texture, the fact that it was blue just grossed them out too much and they couldn't eat it. Oh no, that's cursed. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. It is kind of just cursed, though, right? Like, blue I don't... oatmeal? Anything blue, I'm not sure if I would want to eat it. <laughs> there, was a, there was a cooking channel that I watched a little bit. I was, I was, I was talking about the blue food. And uh, he also had a video where he was just explaining the purpose of uh, marinating food. Um, yeah. And used blue dye to show like how deep the the marinade got into it and such um, yeah and then so he was using it on chicken and so then he had this blue chicken and the <laughs> said it looked kind of gross even though it would taste exactly the same yeah I mean that's horrible <laughs> you wouldn't want to touch that shit <laughs> they almost looked like like shiny rocks like shiny colorful rocks but they were chicken Chicken pieces. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty cursed. <laughs> he was talking about how there's like people, there's like a thing that's been, there's like a common sort of conception going around that marinades are useless. And, and he was uh, explaining that that's not true. Because people were like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't change the flavor all the way deep inside the food, but, like, that's not the point of it. It's supposed to, like, it gets it, like, it gets the flavor, like, stuck on the outside better than just, like, seasoning it afterwards would do, essentially. I like, guess it, like, chemically alters the outside of it and sort of attaches the, the flavoring to it permanently, so you can, said so you can then, like, dry it off and it'll still have the flavor, so if you don't want, like, wet seasoning or you don't want it to be like moist food you just want it to be like you, like you don't want it to be uh, juicy and still have the flavor on it 
<laughs> I'm using the polishing feature, and I thought I saw in the um, in the direct. I thought I saw that it could make some things like plants have butterflies on them. Yeah, I but saw that. But all it's doing is making things shiny for me. <laughs> I think it depends. Like I'm using it on plants, but they're just becoming shiny. Interesting. Weird. I didn't know Elena's girlfriend was in this game. <laughs> wow. Shiny. Yeah. Um, yeah, the channel I'm talking about is called uh, Adam Ragusia. And uh, I really enjoy his videos. He talks about cooking stuff and also just kind of food, food science stuff. And things like that. He had a video talking about how cooking food is actually natural for us to do. And so it's silly when people do raw food diets, like, as, like, acting like it's more natural that way. Yeah. He's talking about how cooking seems to have been developed even before humans existed. <laughs> because... By who? By, like, other hominid species. Pre-human hominid species oh. developed cooking before That's humans. That's amazing. Did. Yeah, because I think this he said there was evidence of cooking like a million years ago. Um, Whoa, that's but, a lot of years. Yeah, but humans, anatomically modern humans, have only existed for about two hundred and fifty thousand years. I think I think they estimated between a million and five hundred thousand years ago is when cooking was first developed and. Anywhere in there is long before humans, so <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Wow. You mentioned that cooking, the existence of cooking may have uh, been what caused us to end up the way we are, like th that we evolved the way we are, because uh, we have really small digestive systems compared to other animals, um, yeah. as if it is like prepared or expecting to eat, like receive cooked food, because cooking basically just pre-digests the food outside of the body and oh, so our digestive really yeah our digestive system is set up to expect to spend less energy on digesting food than other animals would i didn't know that that's interesting yeah cooking releases uh, a lot of uh, nutrients that would be impossible to get out of the food without cooking it no way <laughs> Yeah, that's how our Rain World streams tend to go, is we just kind of, I kind of just ambiently play the game, and then we just talk about stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I often am not making a lot of progress, so it's a good time to spend just talking about stuff. <laughs> it's a slow game. A lot of trial and error. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that was really cool to think about. Um, they said uh, originally cooking would have just been, you know, like putting a stick or putting food on a stick and just putting it directly into fire, so just completely dry heat. Um, oh yeah, the other thing that cooking does, of course, is it kills pathogens, so it makes food safer to eat and less likely to die from eating stuff, which is important for survival, <laughs> as you could imagine. Yeah. Especially because uh, hum hominid species uh, started eating meat a long time ago. And uh, yeah, meat yum, carries yum. a lot of pathogens. <laughs> I also, something I was thinking about, um, this isn't true in all cases, but I think it was significant enough to point out, was that uh, a lot of people have sort of like a natural aversion to, to raw forms of food especially raw meats, stuff like that. And they often will, you know, be, like, disgusted or repulsed by the raw uh, version, but be fine eating it cooked. And I feel like that could be evidence of us evolving to uh, eat cooked foods. <laughs> yeah, evolving to eat that yum-yum That's, yum of course, shit. not universal, of course, because, you know, there's things like sushi and stuff like that. So... There's also a cultural aspect to that. 
Um, oh yeah, another evidence for it, though, of course, is that every culture on Earth has cooking as part of their culture. Right. <laughs> and uh, talked sense. about a researcher who was like a field researcher in Ghana and was talking about how in their culture all of their food is cooked. They don't consider it a meal if you don't cook the food first. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> they do not eat raw food. They always cook it. I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> What if I was always cooking? <laughs> cooking pizza. Yeah, I'm always cooking pizza. All day. Cooked foods take less energy to digest. Yes, I did mention that. Because, as I, I mentioned that cooking food basically is di pre-digesting it. A little bit. The, the term is called bioavailability. <laughs> And uh, cooking food makes certain nutrients more bioavailable to you. <laughs> I didn't mean to throw that. I was trying to throw this. I've activated the creature. I was trying to go around, but... Uh... Okay, it's leaving. Um... But yeah, also an interesting part of that video was he talked about uh, how humans would have invented ceramics and also how they invented uh, uh, boiling food. Because those go together. Um, there's evidence that humans have been boiling food for uh, like well over like a hundred thousand years or so. Damn. <laughs> Because I've and been also eating grains for a million years. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. Because that was that was another thing that was brought up. One of the diets was the the paleo diet, where they where they assumed that humans didn't used to gosh dang it, humans didn't used to eat grains at all. Um, but there's they found in Neanderthal skulls from about a hundred thousand years ago. Uh. They found that they they had uh, grains, uh, processed grains stuck in their teeth, like oh. they would have been boiled. <laughs> yum yum. Yep. Get that shit in my teeth. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they said uh, originally boiling was done by well, because. Well, the, the earliest form of boiling was probably taking something like animal hide and filling it with water and then hanging it over the fire and putting the food in that. Um, which didn't work very well because it would have dripped into the fire a lot and probably put it out. <laughs> that wasn't the, oh. wasn't the best way to do it. But uh, then they figured out that you could just heat up a rock and put the rock into water. And then that would heat up the water and then you could put the food in that. That's neat. <laughs> And that's still done in some places in the world, too. Hey, Sasha. You could put it in, like, a big leaf or something like that. Yeah. And then uh, he talked about how uh, pottery was probably initially discovered. Um, it would have, you know, just fig it would have just found clay and then realized that once it dries out, or realized that you can, like, mold it, right? And then once it dries out, it becomes hard. Um, but not super good at, at holding yeah, water. Yeah. Like, water will eventually dissolve it and make it soft again. Um, and so they probably started trying to, uh, speed up the drying process by instead of just putting it in the sun, uh, like putting it next to fire. And then probably accidentally mm -hmm. discovered that the fire makes it much harder and not water soluble anymore. <laughs> um. And then from there developed, uh, like properly firing the clay. So I think it's really interesting to think about how these, how the process for these things probably would have went. <laughs> and a lot of human discovery was probably just done on accident, yeah. and people just messing around with stuff. <laughs> They're just like, oopsie, I accidentally made a 10 teradonk computer. <laughs> I I'll accidentally s invented the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like computers were not invented by accident. I feel like that's like, not an example of that. 
Oops, I accidentally invented a computer. I <laughs> guess I can do accounting now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna go get an office job now that I have a computer. <laughs> that was in um three thousand BC. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> It's easy to tell how old, uh, or how long we've been doing ceramic stuff because ceramics, like they're really, easy, they are preserved really well because they're like extremely sturdy. Yeah. So basically, if you, um, if you wanna, if you wanna like write something important that you want nobody to ever forget ever. Write it on ceramic. Yeah. <laughs> or so carve like, it into ceramic. Yeah. Yeah, so like if I wanted to preserve my recipe for chips, pizza, for and grilled hot dogs, um, filled with burger, <laughs> I would write it on. Oh, you threw that the wrong way, bug cat. By the way, I invented grilled hot dogs filled with burger by accident. Oh, of course. Yeah. I just had a bunch of tiny burgers, and I accidentally dropped them, and they fell inside my hot dog, and I was like, oh shit. That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd also mention that uh, cooking stuff in water is especially good, because any of the nutritious stuff that's like that comes out of the food when it's cooked stays in the water and then you can drink the water and still get the still get the nutrients oh so it's like makes it extra efficient oh weird <laughs> why are the nutrients easier to for your body to handle when they're in the water um well i mean it just it keeps them right because cooking usually loses some stuff as well as gaining some things that you yeah. can get from the food. But uh, making like a stew means that you still get to keep all of it because it just stays in the water instead of oh, yeah. falling away. <laughs> they said the only problem is that early humans probably got a lot of ash in their food, which is carcinogenic. But uh, oh no, you mentioned that uh, early humans didn't live very long anyway. So cooking the food to like survive a bit longer from doing that probably outweighed the fact that that they were that the, that the ash was carcinogenic. Right. <laughs> and the video is like, well, you only have to live to be about fourteen or so anyway, right? <laughs> God, <laughs> that's sad. Yeah. That's at least one nice thing about living in modern times is that life expectancy is way longer. I mean, there's a lot of nice things, don't get me wrong. <laughs> things could be better, though, if yeah. people fucking didn't hoard wealth. <laughs> didn't hate other people for no fucking reason. Oh. Man, people are fucked up sometimes. Oh, I see. They said uh, cooking was probably also a natural thing for us to develop because of our social nature, and cooking is a very social thing to do. Yeah. They said it was probably initially all about, you know, communal food source type of thing. Right. Okay, so that uh, not everybody had to make the food or get yeah, the food. Yeah, so everyone whatever. could share the community hot dog. Yeah, the endless hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's the lore of the endless hot dog. <laughs> yeah. I really like the scenery in this game, by the way. Thinking about oh, that. Oh, good. I get up there. Sometimes it bugs me how the short the bug cat's jump is. No also, some of the things that you can climb on aren't super apparent. Sometimes. And I just oh, have yeah. to suss them out. That's tragic. You have to be sus. Yeah, exactly. Are you playing Among Us? Yep, we're still playing Among Us. 
Oh my god, Among, Among Us. Us never ended. Remember Arrow that's was so like... Lucky. Arrow was like... That's a strange way to say Among Us. When I said we were gonna play Rain World. <laughs> yeah, we're playing Among Us. Here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, similarly on that on that line of thinking about uh, how human life has improved over time. Something that's interesting about that is that people have gotten a lot taller over time. Like even not that long ago, like a couple hundred years ago, people on average were way shorter than they are now. Which oh. is kind of weird. Yeah. Short moments. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Like, like, there's that myth about Napoleon being really short, right? But, uh... Yeah. He apparently was, he was average height for his movie. time, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, in fact, boy. I think he was actually, like, kind of tall. A healthy, well-fed boy. Yep. <laughs> We've just slowly gotten taller. We're becoming gigantic. <laughs> Eventually we'll be the Striders from All Tomorrows. Yeah. Oh, there's a little bean. I don't from know what mind. that is. My bug cat mind. <laughs> you can ask Abyss about it later. Abyss knows all about All Tomorrows. <laughs> Sasha says... I just got a text asking if I'd be willing to advertise a product on my car and earn $900 for doing so. And says on I don't even car? have a car. <laughs> Amazing. They should offer me to advertise something on the side of my bike. <laughs> yeah. They should offer to uh, for me to advertise something on the side of my skateboard. That's <laughs> the very the thin side <laughs> of the yeah, skateboard. Yeah, it's so thin you couldn't see it. Ask you to advertise the something on the bottom of your oh skateboard. God. What? Ask you to advertise something on the bottom of your skateboard. Yeah. Where the stickers go. You're advertising the you're advertising my stream on the bottom of your skateboard. That's true. Except that if you didn't know what it oh was. Oh my god, did you, you see that sick move I just pulled off to get away from that thing? It was incredible. Yo, sick. Your moves are swifty. Wayne is getting swifty tonight. Wayne is Excuse me. Glover dub dubbing tonight. Are you making Rick and Morty references on my stream? No, I, I promise I'm not. It's, I'm pretty no sure that's from Rick, Richard, Rick and Morty. No Richard here. Hey, I pinky swear. Mm, Sasha knows about Rick and Morty. She can tell me if that was what that was. I, I, I swear. I swear on my life. <laughs> On your wife. Yeah, you're my wife. <laughs> Underhang. This is a new zone. We've made it to a new place. Congrats! You looked it up and it's apparently a confirmed scam. Oh, okay. Amazing. Yeah, how would they know if you, you were advertising on your car? Because sure, maybe you would want to put it on the side of your car. That you definitely have? Yeah. The music here is weird. Sasha says, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, Rick and Morty memo Moments, Pickle Rick. Is that the name of a YouTube no, we're video? Not, we're not talking about Rick and Morty. I swear, I know we're not. When people say it like Rick and Morty, it just sounds like it's <laughs> one person's name. Rigor Mortis. <laughs> it's like somebody named Rick and Morty. Yeah. Oh lord. Got pals in town. Look everybody, we got pals in town over here. Yo, pal moments. It's hard to hurt that thing. So I just don't fall for Cassie's tricks. There are no tricks. Not a single one. Sasha's so telling me that you're talking about Rick and Marty. Nope. 
So what I want to understand is why the bug cat went straight down there. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Richard is not happening. Richard is not happening? Yep. Richard did Richard is not real and Morty did not happen. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever saw anything about Rick and Morty was an advertisement at the movie theater. Before a movie. I don't even remember what movie it was before. Oh. I think I was there with my grandma. Not, not certain on it. That's what my memory is telling me. Has the stream been good all the all this time, by the way, Sasha? No audio glitches or frame drops or anything? It says we have no frame drops, so I shouldn't. Just hope that there aren't any. Oh Lord. Is this? I did have to be sitting right there. That was the worst possible place. First. Maybe we should. Maybe we won't wait until next Halloween to do Little Nightmares 2 a bit more soon than that. Oh, yes. Good idea. Maybe we can do that when we finally finish Rain World. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be next Halloween. <laughs> I don't think it's going to take us that long. <laughs> I've heard that we're getting closer. I've, I've been told that we're getting closer to the end of this game. Sort of. Well, that's not inspiring confidence. <laughs> He still got me. Gosh dang it. Those tentacle things are really obnoxious. What if I paid you $900 to put the bean bug on your car? That would be awesome. I would do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> You shouldn't be advertising anything on your car unless it's your own business or you're an NASCAR driver. Or a hot dog. It's, this is true. I like the hot dog car and Hot Wheels Unleashed. You should for sure advertise hot dog. The only problem... If there is a hot dog, then people should know about it. The only oh problem God. I have with Hot Wheels Unleashed is that um, there's only like a certain number of coins you can get playing the story mode. And then the only other way to get coins is to play the multiplayer mode, which is online only. And I have the PlayStation 4 version, and I don't have the PlayStation Online service. Nor do I want it. So oh. I'm just out of luck. I can't get any more cars now. Because <laughs> I can't get any more coins yeah. to buy them with. That's kind of a shame, in my opinion. Yeah, that's. Great. You can share you can share tracks and custom paint jobs for cars online without the the PlayStation Online though. It's like, I'm done with the game now, right? Because I played the the story mode, You're and done I finished with it. Meals on Friday. Yeah, well, actually, it took me quite a while. <laughs> I I feel like I got a lot out of the game. But uh, it is a shame that I can't unlock any further cars or anything because I don't want to pay for Sony's online service. Because <laughs> what am I going to use it for? Just this one game? And then I'm not like, I've got too many other things to play. I'm, I'm, I finished the story mode. I'm good. <laughs> At least with the Nintendo Switch online, as expensive and sort of not great as it is, I'm at least getting things out of it that I'm going to use. Right. I'm just not a Sony person. Sorry. Sorry, Sony. <laughs> yeah, I'll play sorry, games Sony. on your console, but... Not uh, online. Sorry, Sony. 
I was just thinking the other day about how ridiculous the PlayStation 5 is, too. Like, it's like the console with the least possible reason for me to get one. And they oh, didn't... Yeah. And when I was at Target the other day, they didn't have any. It was kind of ridiculous. Amazing. And they only had, like, five games for it. But they had a whole ton of PlayStation 4 games, including ones that were, like, you know, brand new releases. Yeah. So... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they're ever gonna get past the PS4 because the PS5 doesn't like do much of anything past beyond what the PS4 does, especially if you have the Pro one, like I do. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. Personally, I the rarely only... ever feel like even the Switch is not enough power for something I want to play. So like, yeah, it, I don't know. I go I for the like PS4 it's... just because I know it's you, you know. You really don't need to keep upgrading power like unless people just discover like holy shit wild shit that, like you know unless people innovate some wild shit like maybe i'm not having enough imagination here like maybe yeah. there's more you can do with all that power than just graphics like maybe somebody's gonna come out with a fully voxel based game that Dreams. is like incredibly detailed and it's like powder game but in 3d oh. and then i'm gonna be like oh shit i gotta get an amazing seven core <laughs> system to play this <laughs> but, but yeah the ps know, the, basically the only thing i've it. heard that the ps5 does that's significant over the ps4 pro is the load times are better and it's like well i'm not gonna buy it a new console for that. And the only reason the load times are better is because it has a solid state drive instead of a hard disk drive. Uh huh. So. It's like, well, why would I bother? It's not enough for me. Graphically speaking, right. it's going to be almost identical. I mean, the PS4 Pro can already do 4K, and it's not like there's anything beyond 4K is like normal nowadays yet. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't even used the 4K on the PS4 Pro. We have a 4K TV, Amazing. but it's in the other room. I've never, uh, I've never used it for the PS4. I, t I mostly have it around because my computer's getting kind of old and not super reliable with, with, uh, with games nowadays. But the PS4 will, you know, definitely run stuff. And they keep putting the games out on it, right? So, like, they keep simultaneously releasing stuff on PS4 and PS5. So it's like, well, I'll just get the PS4 game, you know? And I know it'll run a little bit better than the Switch. So it's like... Get it. I still don't... I still don't have any exclusive games for the PS4. <laughs> It's all just stuff that I could have gotten on the Switch, but got on the PS4 instead. The controller barely does anything new either. As far as I'm aware, it has like touch sensors on the back, and it has yeah. like. I thought they already had touch sensors, or was that the... There was PS the little touchpad thing. Vita. Yeah, the PS Vita oh, had yeah, touch sensors on the back. The PS Vita that had the touch on the back. And it had the weird advertisement with the person with, uh... Uh... On bo both uh, sides. <laughs> on the front and back. <laughs> what on the front and back? Hey, this is sus? I'm writing it to you. You what? I'm writing it to you. Oh boy. This is gonna be cursed. That's oh how they god, the that's Vita. horrible! Yeah! <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah. This showed me that My ad, God. of course. So I'm aware of it. That's deeply cursed. It really, really is.
And that's like well beyond the time when I would have expected ads like that. That's like early 2000s type of stuff. Late 90s type of stuff. Really hoping for a save, please. I'm gonna follow the little blue guy. It's gonna start raining soon. We've been playing the DLC of Isaac that finally landed on consoles. And they boosted the difficulty, like, notably. Oh, dang. Yeah. I think I mentioned you- I think I, I remember you mentioning that a while back. Oh, yeah? The difficulty would be greater. That. Yeah, like, I've been- I've been taking significant damage on, like, the first few floors, and it's like, whoa. Hold on, since when were they this dangerous? <laughs> Rough and tumble. They have like alternate paths. This is unfortunate because this thing is stuck. Um, and the alternate paths are more difficult. And I thought I would just go to those and be like, "Oh, this is fine. I'm, I can handle this." But no, they're really tough. Oh dang! I'm stuck on something. I'm stuck on one of these guys. Gotta take this thing with me so it stops sticking to me. I wish this thing would move, I don't have time for this. Rain world moments. Amazing. I find it funny that the Isaac DLC and the Animal Crossing DLC, or well, the update at least for Animal Crossing, launched within like a few hours of each other, and I've been yeah. playing both. <laughs> <laughs> They're like very different games. Very. I've had streams like that before, where I'm like, I bet nobody has ever played these two games together. I see. I don't remember any off the top of my head, but yeah. <laughs> okay, I finally set the little sticky guy down. Did not stick to me. Boy, there's no save places. It's concerning. Uh oh. Uh oh, spaghettio. Uh oh, spaghetti milk. Yeah, there's milk in the spaghetti, Cassie. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I put it in there. I thought it would be funny. Sasha so said, so one is a horrifying game, including a lot of horror moments, and the other one is Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Basically. You're gonna get zapped. The heck is this? Ali, have you played the Happy Home DLC yet? Yeah, remember I told you I played a little bit of it. I made an apple house for Apple. Oh yeah, I remember now. I have to decorate the outside of, of the house still. It was just... Uh, kinda late when I was trying to play it and had to go to sleep. <laughs> we see Apple moments. Yeah. Also, I was playing Plants vs. Zombies 2 last night. I can't believe Apple loves... Um, Apples? The computers. Oh. <laughs> oh, Cassie, that reminds me. Did you see... Because you, know you know the Facebook meta thing? Did yeah. you see the post I shared where apparently there's like a couple other companies that are already called meta? Oh, really? Yeah. And they were, <laughs> they, they were talking about that. It's like... 
I don't think that they sh they actually are allowed to just call it that. They said it was extremely bold of them to just announce that as the name of their company when there's already companies with that name. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that. Like, I feel like... There's one that's just amazing, called Meta, but... and then the other one was Meta something, but yeah. <laughs> it's amazing that one word names are, are like, still a thing, because you would have thought they would all have been done. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think. So they said, hopefully it will be bad for them and not for the existing companies. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I doubt it, but like, you know, we can dream. Yeah. I suppose. Oh my god, I hate that these things just camp in these places where I need to go through. No spawn camping. Yeah, rude. I, te I guess technically well, it's not it's right at spawn. You should go to go to hell for it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one time that Ash got like harassed on Twitter for uh, saying that uh, oh. people should get banned for spawn camping, or that it was that it was fair that people got uh, should people that. Let me let me not trip over my words here. That he said that it was that it was fair for people to get banned for spawn camping in Splatoon 2. Uh. Oh, in Splatoon 2? Yeah. Hmm. That's that's tough because you have a shield. Like there's a shield around the yeah. um There's a shield around the spawn point, so like if you're trying to kill someone right at spawn, they obviously have the advantage, right? Like he thought it was he thought it was fair to report people for spawn camping. Ash did? Yeah. Uh no, I gotta disagree. Yeah, I also did, but I also didn't think that he should have gotten harassed by the Splatoon community. No, I over absolutely it. like what the fuck? <laughs> That's what I told him at the time, I was like, Well, I don't really agree with you, but I especially don't agree with the fact that people are harassing you over this. That's like, kind of wild. Yeah, he ended up like deleting his account and recreating it again later. Like his current account is right. not his original one. He said there was some like really big accounts that were like, that were like dunking on him. God. Yeah, it was like, it was ridiculous. I'm sure he could tell the story better than I can, but... <laughs> Yeah, he sometimes brings up, and like, yeah, that one time the Splatoon community harassed me off of Twitter. That's hog wild? I did not know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely consider it fair, though. Like, also, like, what, what do you consider spawn camping? It was just, you know, people, like, getting right up on the spawn and just, uh, just being there. I guess. I mean, it was if just you as do simple that, as that. you're probably gonna die if you're going right <laughs> to spawn, because, like, they Cause, have cause a I was, cause, cause, yeah, that was my argument, was just like, well, if that's working for them, then, like, that's fair enough, you know? That's a legitimate strategy. Because, like, people aren't gonna stop doing that because, like, their goal is just to win, right? Right. If that's getting, if they're winning by spawn camping, they're gonna do it. So, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I think, like, it's an extension of the turfing mechanics of the game, too. Like, you gotta... Because he was arguing that it's banned, like, it's a bannable offense in other similar games. Or they would take Do measures to stop people from doing that. Fun? I don't know. <laughs> uh. I think also, like, it's partially an extension of the turfing mechanics. Right, because yeah. like if because you're trying to get the can... ink on everything, including the yeah. other the other the other team's base. Yeah, it's so your like advantage you to be in there. Of with a bunch of ink, then like you have control of it. Right, and I felt I felt like this was against me personally as well because that one of my biggest strategies in that game was trying to get deep into their base and cover everything up and make them have to. Uh, yeah. Have to deal with that rather than coming over That's to our what base. That's I do a lot too. I had a couple. Oh, did you see that? We I swapped places with the lizard. <laughs> we went through the pipe at the same time, just right on time. Because I use a roller. 
which like specializes in stealth. I like yeah. to like. There's a couple levels um, I liked in particular because I had great strategies to like always get deep into their base and mess them oh, up. Nice. Particularly the 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 art school one. Remember that one? Oh yeah. And there was there's like one little wall that goes, and if you go up that wall, you get into their base. Yeah. And the, I en I enjoyed. I also um. The, the curling bombs are very useful for sneaking around. I use those all the time. People don't usually. I've never. What I've, do you I've mean seen for people. sneaking around, though, because they can see the bomb, and most players know that. But, oh. like, you, you always say that when I bring this up, but I only, ever, I only ever saw somebody go after me swimming through the trail once. Otherwise, I always just go right past people doing that. But he pays attention. I mean, it's just like a Curling Bombs 101 kind of thing, you know, like... Well, then how come I've never seen anybody who knew about it? It was like my bread and butter, are nobody... You, are nobody... you only playing Turf Wars? Yeah. I that only ever play Turf War. Nobody ever questioned my Curling Bombs. They just got out of the way of them that and... Explains it. Oh, I just fell. Great. <laughs> All of that just to fall. Losing by falling is like the worst in this. The the thing with curling bombs is that like, it it can be more about like mind games. Like you can make the opponent question like, did they swim with the bomb or did they not? <laughs> like you can you can make it look like you're gonna swim with it and then you cannot swim with it. But if you just always swim with it, then like people know that you can do that. You know. I never saw anybody who who like tried to like shoot at the trail as it was going or anything except for one time where somebody caught me i see <laughs> i thought i was the only one who knew to do that because i never i never saw what? anybody else do it i think i saw it like maybe twice and then uh nobody ever stopped me i mean whenever i have curling bombs in my kit i straight up use them to get around like all the time <laughs> Yeah, me too, but nobody, nobody, nobody ever noticed me. Nobody tried to stop me. Are you just telling me people who play Turf Wars are, are mostly just amateurs? I mean, they're mostly beginners. <laughs> I, I think. At least that's the impression I get. Um, maybe that's wrong, but like, I think <laughs> mostly... Um, like, if you've played the game a lot, you're playing ranked. Oh, I played the game for hundreds of hours and I only ever played Turf War. Damn, hundreds? How many hundreds? Like, probably, I think not quite 300. That's a lot oh, for I me. Oh, I have like double that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have almost 500 hours in Animal Crossing. No, I think Damn. it was 495. I think I finally caught up with you. <laughs> Although I think I have, I think it's actually like on par with Splatoon now. Wait, oh no! Check. Maybe I didn't catch up with you. No, yeah, actually, it's about to it's about to beat Splatoon. So. Oh no! You beat me. Oh no! You beat me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you beat me! Ah! <laughs> oh, no, also, it looks like moment. Sasha is our only viewer right now. Oh, Sasha moment. Sasha viewer moment. Sasha, go tell all of your friends to come watch the stream right now. Yeah. It's up to you. You have to join us. Join us, folks. <laughs> tell them about the bean bug. They'll come right over. How long have we been streaming? Um, exactly an hour. I see. It feels like it's been longer because this game is so slow. Yeah. But it's actually only been an hour. Yeah, I got past that tentacle guy pretty good. Uh, <laughs> grabbed my butt, but I got away. It's too bad the bug cat doesn't have a detachable tail. That would help. Yeah. 
The tentacles are following me. I don't like that. Also, earlier I forgot to mention a tentacle monster just fell down a pit and was gone. That was very good. Oh, I love when that happens. It was good times only. This is very dangerous. There's two of you. Okay, that was a bit of a game of cat and mouse. It's funny that I was playing as the, the mouse in that when it's bug cat. I often forget that this character is actually called slug cat. <laughs> I say bug cat so often. I think bug cat bug is cat. just a better name. I'm gonna I'm gonna petition them to change the name to bug cat because I think it's actually just better. I see. Yeah. <laughs> petition moments. Yeah. The bug cat is climbing backwards. <laughs> also, that chart that Arrow sent was wild for this game, where there's like a million different moves you can do, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's absurd. <laughs> this game is a bit wild. Yeah, it's. I would go so far as to say it's hog wild. Yeah, you know, if you may be so bold. <laughs> Arrow says, wow, I get here and you mention my name, wild. Hi, Arrow. Hi, Arrow. We are still playing this game. Yep. Oh, it says there's a save point it down that way. Them. It's funny that this is such a long game, because not much happens in it, which isn't a bad thing. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> It is true. Yeah. Kinda it's just, a very, um... The things that happen are just random. kind of random. Yeah. Super, uh... Emergent. Oh, oh. There. <laughs> I love escaping from creatures through the pipes like that. So That's silly. Scary. Well, it's... Save point. I can't go over there, that's too far for a little cat. Or for a little bug. Therefore, it's too far for a bug cat. Oh, there's yep. something down here. It's weird. Okay. No, oh, Bugcat, I want you to do the long jump. Do the roar! Roar moments. <laughs> oh, there's an ant. Flying ant for me to eat. Wait, wait, though. Hey, Ollie. Yeah? Do you think this is a good night to have a curse? Not particularly. Oh. Making Castlevania 2 references on my stream, huh? Maybe. <laughs> I've played that game, actually. The only classic Castlevania I'm still missing is 3, actually. Although, I own it. I mean, I just haven't played it. <laughs> I see. The thing is, I actually know that quote from Isaac, though. Oh. Yeah, they use it in this game. Can't believe it. Because there's a character that gets their power boosted a ton when they're on low health. And uh, It's just, uh, in Castlevania 2, it pops up every... Because there's a day-night cycle in that game, but every time it goes to nighttime, it just says, What a horrible night to have a curse. And it's like a really slow, unskippable text box. <laughs> And then, and then it fades to black, it. and then a, fades back in. It's an NES-looking text box. It's <laughs> just like, what a horrible night to have a curse, and you just have to wait for it to finish before you can keep going. Yeah, it's kind of a slow process in Castlevania 2, waiting for that to go by. 
that explains why it's a funny meme. Made infamous by the angry video game nerd. Because his first episode was about Castlevania 2. Oh damn, really? Yeah, and he complained about the text box when it changes the day to night cycle. Inaugural moments. And also, your goal in Castlevania 2 is to do it as fast as possible to get the best ending. So you don't want to see that uh, message come up too <laughs> many times. Amazing. Castlevania 2 is wild. It's a lot like Zelda Does 2. Does the text I... box count toward your time? No, it's just that, like, you can tell how long, like, it's it bases how long you've taken by how many day-night cycles you've been through, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Since so you don't want to see it too many times. <laughs> Um, it's a lot, I compare it a lot to Zelda 2. Similarly, uh, set up game, I think. I do love Zelda 2. <laughs> Similarly structured, and also it has a lot of NPC, like it's a poorly translated game, so the NPCs are supposed to be giving you hints, but they say just really random, strange things <laughs> instead because the translation is so terrible. So you can't get any inf any useful information from them. <laughs> That's great. That's how I like shit to be. Really and there's some, there's, things. yeah, there's some really cryptic things you're supposed to do that the NPCs are supposed to help you with, but because it's so poorly translated, they just don't. Look, I love weird cryptic bullshit. That's like, awesome. The most, fa the most famous one, of course, is that there's this place where you're supposed to just sort of crouch for a certain amount of time, and then yeah. a whirlwind comes by and takes you away to the next area. It's just sort of like a random, unassuming spot you're supposed to go to That's and crazy. crouch. And I think amazing. there's an item you're supposed to hold while doing that. Oh my god. That's amazing. <laughs> Something you would, like, truly never figure out on your own, then. Yeah, it's really infamous. Wow. Now, how did I get over there before? I guess I never did get over there, actually. I guess I should go to the to the ball down there. There's two of these things. That's a little suspicious. Oh, get in there, Bugcat. You're about to get start getting zapped. You gotta get down there. Is there any point to this to this ball? I think it's like a bit of a maze. This is a hazy maze cave, if you will. Yeah, with peach and buzzer's poop mix. Yeah! I love that they that they use the word mixed. <laughs> Part of what makes it so funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least some progress has been made on this stream today. Yeah. Let's we'll see if we can make some more. <laughs> Progressors. <laughs> well, you're a progressor. I'm just here vibing. Wow. It's funny that when it's a noun, it's progress, and when it's a verb, it's progress. True. Spoken like a true sage. <laughs> I really like the Castlevania series. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I have not played any of it. I have played I that think... one game, though, that you liked, but I Which wasn't one? into it. What game did you play? That Bloodstained one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's a lot like the... the one that, that one's a lot like Castlevania copy. 3, apparently. Yeah, it was, like, on the cheap, so I was like, alright, yeah. sure. And plus, plus, I'm planning to make a Castlevania-like game, so... And you, you were interested yeah, to help me, uh, so you wanted to do some research. Yeah. <laughs> that is still coming up, by the way, everybody. I'm still planning to make a Castlevania light game. Yeah. Actually, I remember when I was doing a little bit of prototyping for it? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't touched that in a while. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I've been making my own thing. I like having you around for programming help. Because my favorite part is doing the art. <laughs> Oh yeah, my I think I think like the more I make stuff, I think I have realized that programming is like my favorite part still. Oh dang! 
that's that's yeah. useful for me. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't like the programming as much. I just do that part because okay. I gotta. <laughs> Isaac crashing moments. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now I'm thinking about kid picks. That's where that sound comes from. When you undo something. When it, there was like a bunch of like little undo sound effects. One of them was. Uh -oh. and, one, and one of them's. It oh, is no! cursed that we don't. It is cursed that we don't work together more often. I was like. Yeah, we gotta do that. Yeah. Cause I think. I mean, we have stuff that we're planned that, that we're planning to do together. So. Gotta do it. I know you've been working on your own thing lately, though. Been yeah. Been more interested in that. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I can't wait till I can finally show you. <laughs> I also don't know what you've done with with the Super Climb Up uh, remaster because you're keeping that secret for me too. Oh yeah, I actually haven't been touching that much. I've mostly been focusing. Yeah, on I know. My I just I was just mentioning that I still don't know what you did with it. <laughs> so far. Yeah. We got some cool stuff in it. I hope you'll like it. I'm doing some like semi fundamental changes to like movement. What? And there was stuff. a lizard in there. No way. Gosh dang it. It was one of the invisible ones that was hiding in the hidey hole. It was I really weird. I hope rude. you'll like all that stuff. It's like hard to will. say. Um, <laughs> full transparency. I've been being like a little bit bold with it. Like I've just oh, been going like, you know what? I'm just gonna put this in and. And if Elena doesn't like it, I guess I'll change it. <laughs> okay, well, at least at least if it's okay if I don't like it, then I don't mind you doing whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least if you're fine changing it if necessary, then that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Like, a, like full honesty, I'd like rather change something and then you would see how it was rather than like trying to explain it to yeah, you. Yeah, and like... Like, I wanted you to have full freedom with this, too. I didn't, uh, I didn't want yeah. to dictate what we were doing or whatever. Right. Nope, oh, couldn't get past that tentacle that time. I've mostly been addressing, like, small little frustrations I had when I played oh, I the original. Try and make I know the game smoother. wasn't ever frustrating to me. I turned right. it to, I mean, to my taste. <laughs> oh yeah, I have another video to recommend, which is uh, by Izzy's, who's one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, she did a video about uh, a, a weird old... Uh, well, not it's not that old. She kept saying, like, this game is so old. It's from 2009. I don't know what she's on about. But... Uh, <laughs> That's not old yet. I refuse to believe that that's an old game. Um, but in any case, it's called The Path, and I thought it was really interesting. She did a full analysis of the game. It's sort of like oh, a... Oh, cool. I wouldn't even say it was a cult classic. It was more just sort of like a... It's like an obscure game. But uh, perhaps her video about it will make it into a cult classic. It's like a it's it's like a walking simulator type of game, right? It's like sort of minimal interaction. Yeah. It's just sort of about it, it's it's more of like an interactive story type of thing. And That's it's cool. like it's like a very metaphorical sort of like like I want to say like vague sort of storytelling sort of thing where you're supposed to sort of put it together yourself. Like the developers have given some context for the story and the meaning that they intended for it. But they still leave it yeah. open-ended, and like, that's pretty. Neat. It's for you to to figure out what it all means, and so she was just sort of explaining what the developer said, what other people have said, and what she thinks the, like the meaning of the story of is. Yeah, I thought it was really neat, and also she didn't. Called again? It's called the path. Oh yeah. It's like, it's like a weird sort of, uh, interpretation of Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, the concept of the game oh. is incredible. The way it works is incredible, I think, because um, it tells you just to walk to Grandma's house, right? And there's just this straight path to yeah. uh, to Grandma's house through the forest, um, and it tells you not to leave the path. And uh, it gives you a map, and the map is just a straight line <laughs> to Grandma's house. <laughs> and great. so you walk down the path. It's kind of slow. It's all just kind of nice, and it's just kind of got like, like, 
peaceful music. And then you get to Grandma's house, and there's sort of like this on rails thing where you just sort of like look through the rooms of Grandma's house, and then you meet Grandma and like sit on the bed with her, and then the game ends, and then it tells you you failed. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then you're supposed to play, so then you play again, and then you're like, okay, well, what happens if I go off the path? And then you go off the path, and, like, the camera zooms out, and everything gets darker and more creepy. And then you turn around, and the path is gone, and you can't get to it anymore. <laughs> like, it just, the game just deletes it. Oh, curse. And you can't go onto the path anymore. And then there's, like, items and stuff you're supposed to collect and find, and then uh, there's, like, a bunch of different characters you can play as. And each one has different items you find, and it changes the ending when you finally do go back to Grandma's house. Grandma and you sort of learn about the character's personality and everything. And it says each... When you finally have a Grandma moment. <laughs> and each character has a different thing that represents the wolf as well. And it was it was all really neat. <laughs> yeah. It, all, it has a really interesting visual ah. style, too. She mentioned that... Uh, a lot of horror games just try to keep everything like really dark and gloomy, and that's how they try to be spooky. But this game has a lot of vibrant colors and like bright areas and stuff Whoa, like that, but it cool. still feels creepy. Like I think that's it still cool. looks creepy because the colors are sort of like washed out. Like it's sort of like like when you have like a picture that's like overexposed. It's that kind of look. Right. <laughs> and they had they do a lot of weird sort of like transparent overlays over the screen. When you're interacting with certain things and stuff like that, and it's all, it's all really weird. And if you stand still, the game sort of like gets creepier and weirder. Oh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I recommend watching the video for, for uh, that. Not ah, poop. Poop. That's just says she didn't get frustrated while playing Super Climb Up. Oh, good. <laughs> well, hopefully you will also not be frustrated playing the remaster then. <laughs> yeah. I started working a little bit on graphics for the remaster, but I then got sucked back into gray area. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of graphics work for gray area because the, the area I'm working on currently is really graphics heavy more than anything else. I have to make a lot of assets for this part. It's yeah. it's really similar to how the entire workflow was for the original gray area, where it was just I'm drawing everything by hand rather than using right. tiles. I'm using a little bit of tiles for the area I'm working on, but mostly everything is just hand drawn. So I think I hope it'll be a very memorable part of the game. <laughs> it looks it. Is it like a slower, it's a slower part of the game? You're gonna spend probably a lot of time there. I like, I like it from everything yeah. I've seen. <laughs> it's gonna be kind of dialogue heavy. So. It's really nice. <laughs> and it's gonna have a cameo from uh, Sasha's character. From her game. Yeah, Sasha moment. Because I felt like... As soon as she showed me that character, I was like, oh, this is this would be fit, a fitting character to make a cameo in Grey Area. <laughs> what character was it again? Uh, I don't know if I'm at liberty to disclose. Oh, I see. You'd have to, you'd have to ask Sasha. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how under wraps she's keeping this character. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I don't know if I should explain any further. Maybe maybe it should be maybe it should be when people play it they should have to guess which character is from Sasha. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, actually, unless I uh, like credits important though, right? Well, yeah, it'll be the credits. Hey, Ollie, have you ever had short range mega tears? Uh, I can't say that I have. Wow. <laughs> can you re can you really say you've lived if you've never had short range mega tears? Have you had short range mega tears, Sasha? I feel like she, I feel like if anybody around here would have had them, it would have been her.
Oh, she says redacted. Arrow says she said short range mega tears. Awesome. That's great. That's super excellent. I'm thinking, of, I'm pretty sure Vine Sauce sometimes calls Binding of Isaac the Binding of Isaac. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've heard him say that. Also, cursed. you want to know something cursed regarding Vine Sauce? What? Is, um. I've, he's, he played Mario Party with Arlo. What? Really? Yeah, I saw that in the thumbnail of his, and also She Says was there. My god. I got an item that, um, makes your tears do less damage over further distances, and then I got an item that makes them do more damage over further distances. <laughs> This and I tried to watch an Arlo video the other night, and I just, I can't stand listening to him. Oh. Yeah, he really bothers me for some reason. That's why I feel it's cursed that, that he, he did Mario Party with Vinesod. It is a bit cursed. <laughs> and I also just keep thinking about how much he looks like Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster moments, yeah. He's he's Cookie Monster. It's funny that that there's like no other major channels that have a Muppet. It's just Arlo. He's got the market cornered. Yeah, he's a Muppet boy. <laughs> he's not even a unique Muppet either. I, if I found out this was like people found. The Muppet that he's using, and it's just like anybody could buy one. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> uh, this is a bad place to be. Yep, I should have long jumped. Gosh dang it. Gosh, these tentacle things are so obnoxious. I know I said that earlier, but they still are. Like, seriously. Seriously not vibing with these guys. <laughs> First vibes. Oh, also I should probably go put my, my clothes in the lot. Or in the air. In the Sounds like the washing machine is done. So let me go do that real quick. Oh, actually, it'll be one sec. So I'll play a little bit longer. Uh, laundry moments. Yeah, a moment. Here. Greatest of peas. I love the word moment. <laughs> I can't believe that these things keep camping. They don't know how cash. to play fair at all. Can no I... cash. <laughs> can I can I report to Tentacle Monster for camping? Yeah, do it. Where's the report button in Rain World? <laughs> Hi, Biss. <laughs> How do I report? How do I report other characters in Rain World? I love Pizza Biz. Yeah, me too. <laughs> hey, Arrow, can you tell this tentacle monster to be nice to me? I feel like if anybody, I feel like if it would listen to anybody, it would be you. Yeah, tentacle monsters and tentacle monsters know each other. Yeah. Uh oh, now I'm just gonna get accused of like, what, you think all tentacle monsters know each other? Uh oh. Arrow well, says she doesn't believe in authority. You think all babies know each other. Well, that, cause that's just true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> also, I'm gonna be right back one sec to put my clothes in the dryer. So, the stream is all yours for a minute, Kezi. Hi, everyone. 
when I'm a talking baby, Goo Goo Gaga, um, everyone always asks me to say that. That's the baby thing. Like, we don't say that all the time, but, like, I don't know if you, you know, if you want to act like we do, you can. You want to act. Uh, the crowd goes wild whenever I say it. It's like, you know, that's why I say it, but I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the hype. But yeah, you know, Goo Gaga, um, Talking Baby, shit like that. Um, I'm basically on a quest for the endless hot dog. Um, it's it's a hot dog with a beginning but no end. And like, if you find that, you're set. Like, you never have to buy hot dogs again. You never have to go looking for hot dogs and hot dog mines or anything like that. You're just set. You're just set. And that's why I'm on a quest for the endless hot dog. I am back. Um, I come back and I just hear, and that's why I was on a quest for the, for the endless hot dog. Yeah. If you have any leads on where it is, Allie, uh, hit me up. (laughs) But yeah, I was just, uh, back on the topic of the path. I was just thinking about, I really, I feel like it's really clever the way they set up the game. With the, if you just do what the game tells you, then you fail, <laughs> and then Amazing. you're then encouraged to to just explore, and then the game right. really starts. I thought it's that was I thought it was really clever, and I liked sort of the the sort of atmosphere of that. That's pretty neat. really cool I might play it sometime maybe next Halloween the studio that made it is known for doing like artsy type of games what They've, studio is it they're called tales of tales or tale of tales I think studio, something like that studio bring this yeah damn <laughs> They apparently made there was a game called there was one that they that they there was a big controversy over that they had on Steam that was just called I think it was called the graveyard or something like that and uh, yeah. you there's a cemetery and you play as an old woman and your only control is to walk forward and she walks really oh, slowly through the cemetery yeah. and then she sits down for a little bit and then you walk back out of the cemetery and the game ends. I think I vaguely remember people being really upset about that. Yeah, it's one because version. that's it's because that was the free trial version, but you can pay five dollars for the full version. But when you get the full version, oh. the only thing that's different is there's a chance that the old lady will die. Wait, what? That is slightly cursed, actually. Yeah. Like, the full version. It of is the game, only five dollars, but that is slightly cursed. Why would you do that? <laughs> And they they tried they this was supposed to just be like an art piece, um, but but people uh, thought it was more of a rip off than an art piece. I mean, do, does anyone know what it's supposed to be about? There's like some there's like music that goes with it that has subtitles that is like some sort of supposed to go with the story. But. Eros is honestly legendary. I appreciate it. <laughs> like, I gotta say, it's kind of cursed, though, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, I I was listening to that, and I was like, that's kind of great, honestly. It's kind of incredible. I'm like mixed about it. This says five dollars to take a hit out on that old windbag. Like, a damn, okay. <laughs> the, that was all of their kind of games. They were all kind of artsy like that, but that one was the one with the biggest controversy. And I think they're like an indie studio too, right? They're just like, they were like two art students making games. Yeah. And apparently they were funded by the Belgian government. Oh. But uh, eventually ran out of funding, and so then they did a Kickstarter for thing. And I think it was, they said that uh, because they had so much backlash from their other games, they then, they said that they studied AAA video games to see what people 
liked in video games. And then also, they said they gave it like a typical three act structure and some typical gameplay mechanics to oh, try and appeal great. to people. And then they that's and then and said they went forty thousand dollars over budget with marketing and PR, and then the game was a flop, like it just absolute what commercial game? failure. I think it was just called The Sunset or something like that. That's pretty cursed. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel then, about these people. <laughs> they, that was that was the one they did with a Kickstarter because they were no longer funded by the Belgian government. The Belgian government was just like, what the fuck? The old way doesn't die unless I spend five dollars <laughs> on <laughs> um, it. said they only sold 4,000 copies break. in the first month, which was not enough to break even. Oh. I have mixed feelings about the impression I'm getting of these people for me. And then, after that game failed, they then apparently just, one of, at least one of them went on, like, just sort of a temper tantrum on Twitter and was, was saying, like, was like, I hate gamers, they can all die, and stuff like that. Oh god, okay, thanks. They said, I hope they die in <laughs> the same okay. way that they killed all of these innocent creatures in the video games they play. Hey. Okay. Yeah. That's just, a little first. Yeah. And then I think they stopped making I, games after that. The Virgin that versus the Chad Undertale. <laughs> <laughs> the Chad Pizza Time Explosion. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm an indie game, and I haven't. I made an indie game, and I haven't, I haven't. No, I'm just made talking specifically about like the themes of Undertale. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you were just <laughs> talking about how the developers behave. Amazing. I mean, I guess that's part of it, right? <laughs> that's like no. Now I now my feelings have gone from mixed to like, all right, what the fuck? Yeah, it was really wild. Izzy's did a great job with it. It, it's like slightly like annoying that they were like I don't know it's annoying that they're like we are high art over here and then they're like all right we're gonna emulate exactly what a triple a is and then they couldn't do like, that wait a minute hey <laughs> what yeah because they decided that gamers just didn't want the kind of games that they were making so they had to they had to appeal to them They thought it was gamers' faults, basically, that their games weren't successful. <laughs> it is the gamers' fault. It's always the gamers' fault. Oh, yeah, fault. yeah, yeah. Yeah. They weren't wrong. The gamers are cursed. But they feel like they took the wrong lesson from it. Yeah, like... I mean, if they were talking about, like, how many innocent creatures are killed in games, like, they absolutely have a point that, like, violence is so normalized <laughs> in games that we don't think about it for a second, but, like, I I feel like wishing death upon people who are just playing games, or, you know, just... Oh, you disappeared. Hello? There you are. Hi. Yeah, I feel like wishing death upon people who are just part of a culture that is collectively normalized something is like not I, I don't know about that one <laughs> yeah that's pretty cursed <laughs> I I'm... agree with the point broadly but Jesus fuck yeah <laughs> but uh I feel like the path is probably the best thing that they made it actually looks genuinely good. There was a couple things that Izzy felt was, she said, for lack of a better word, problematic. But oh yeah, like what? Uh, one of the character storylines is, uh, is framed a bit strangely. Cause it was about Wait, like, it was, it seems to be about like a like a negative sexual experience. But mm -hmm. um. They they they're framing it as if because 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 the, also the the sort of the theme of the game is like all of the characters are going through things that are necessary to go through to grow up. Uh huh. And she didn't really like the 
the implication of that. That is pretty cursed. Yeah. <laughs> so, she said she wasn't very fond of that storyline in particular, but... <laughs> I feel like it's also, like, really, like... I don't know, it's frustrating that they would spend, like, a bajillion dollars on marketing and then it flops, and then they're like, Jesus, fuck, our art game flopped, <laughs> even though we marketed it to hell and back. <laughs> what is art nowadays? <laughs> if you can't, if you can't pump way too much money into, 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 um, into marketing it, and then it still flops, that's not art. Art <laughs> is when you spend money to make it popular. No, no. That's like, that's a bit, that's a bit twisted, isn't it? I hate that this tentacle monster hangs out here. It makes sense so that most of the time I don't actually get to explore here because I can't get past the initial part here. Most of the runs are just me running into the tentacle monster and that's it. It's just like, I don't know, it's a bit funny, right? Because most of us would never see money like that and be able to yeah. put it into marketing a game right and then they're sat here with all that money and they're Remember like, that was Ooh, over budget right. they didn't even make that much on the kickstarter god yeah that's amazing they just had forty thousand dollars to use on marketing and them just themselves like, i mean they probably just like, i feel like they maybe were so upset because i would imagine they probably maybe went into debt over that because they were like banking well, yeah, on that i'm sure but like geez <laughs> don't do that then yeah <laughs> You've got an idea for our Soma stream, Arrow? What is it? Please tell. Get right to before the end and then start the Outer Wilds DLC? Oh. What is your, what is your reasoning for that? We have two nested games that are almost done. Oh, because we'd have, we'd have Horizon Zero Dawn and Soma almost done. <laughs> also, Arrow, I think that the next thing that we should do once we get through this stuff is definitely Borderlands 3. Because I still want to play that game, and you said you were kind of interested to, to play it with me. I think we should definitely go for that. Because I, I would love to play one with you where we can actually like both play it at the same time. I think that would be fun. Yeah, keep an eye out for it. It's I think it goes on sale pretty often. Cuz when I got it it was only 10 bucks. So <laughs> I feel like once once a game goes down to $10, it's probably like not going to stay more than that for a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Balan went down to $20. So what what is that what does that say about Borderlands three that it went down to ten dollars in in like well a Balan went down to twenty faster than Borderlands did I think Borderlands was already out for longer by the time it was ten dollars than Balan was by the time it was twenty so Borderlands got a bigger discount but it took longer to get the discount. <laughs> Chroma seemed to have a very low opinion of Borderlands 3, so... Oh, why? <laughs> well, I don't remember what they said, but... We'll see. <laughs> well, that was kind of glitchy. The fruit stayed up on the ledge even though I fell all the way down. And then it snapped back to me. For a second. Well, yeah, I had a good bike ride today. I figured out um, a much better route to go that's way easier. I managed to avoid the biggest hill. I just, like, rode around it. <laughs> so I'll probably, go that w I'll probably go that way every time now. Nice. You have seen a bit of it and have a low opinion of the series in general now? 
Oh. You have a soft spot for the first Damn. one. I also really love the first one, but uh, I don't like the second one as much, and I've never played the pre-sequel because I didn't hear much good about it. I saw somebody say that you should only get that game if you've played all the DLC in Borderlands 2 and still want more. Damn. <laughs> I just didn't really like the tone of Borderlands 2, and apparently Borderlands 3 is even farther down that type of tone. <laughs> but yeah, like you, Arrow, I am still curious to, to see Borderlands 3. Especially just because I have it, you know? <laughs> it's just sitting on my shelf. You have the pre-sequel because it was free on Epic or something, but you haven't touched it. Oh, I see. I saw some, because the whole game takes place on the moon, right? And so you have moon physics the whole time. And oh. that really bugged some people. <laughs> Whereas other people thought it was fun and made for some interesting, like, gunplay and stuff like that. To be able to, like, jump so high and stuff like that, but... Some people prefer Man, Isaac that is to, wild. Sometimes you could just get, like, thing. mad screen clutter. <laughs> oh? It's amazing. Isn't there a setting to yeah, reduce it? Should. What? I thought there was a setting to reduce it. To reduce screen clutter? Yeah, to, like, make the HUD smaller so that it takes up less space. Well, yeah, but the HUD is, like, the least of your issues when you have, like, so many different abilities that oh. you're just firing bullets in every direction that have their own paths. Oh, and that you're talking and... about. I see. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I had, like, I was being trailed by two little dudes that shot additional tears for me, and, like, uh -huh. I had an item that could make a bunch of them, so I just had a bunch of little dudes there, following little there we me, go. firing a ton of tears. And I also had an item that, um, makes it so that you f fire tears in all well, four directions. For a second I thought you were gonna say once. you fart something. <laughs> no. I had an item that makes it so you fire tears in all four directions at once, so all my little dudes were firing in all the cardinal directions. But... And it was cursed. <laughs> I couldn't see shit, but I still won. <laughs> Arrow says moon is water levels too. There was the game that I played the most as a little kid uh, called Mini Car Racing. Um, the last it, there's like several like leagues you go through. They, like the tracks get more complex and more difficult, like, and it just goes like A B C D. Right, um, but the last yeah. league is League Moon, and you and all the tracks take place on the moon, and like all the jumps are like really floaty and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, it's kind of incredible. I really wish I could play that game, but for some reason it's a 16-bit program, and I've had an awful time trying to run it. I have oh. to figure out how to use a virtual machine and emulate 16-bit Windows, or emulate 32-bit Windows rather because my computer should be able to do that, and then 32-bit Windows accepts 16-bit programs. <laughs> I would really love to stream that game, but... Virtual machines scare me. It's pointing out there's a save point up there, but I, you can't reach it. This is a dead end. Bonkers. Oh, I'm a little bit curious, though. See here. Like, oh yes, I'm slightly curious about this over here. Oh. Oh, never mind. It was pointless. Dang it. <laughs> that didn't help. Well, I have another idea though, so let's keep going this way. I still gotta play Metroid Dread. Thinking about, I've been thinking about that. It's like I keep seeing it on my home menu. I'm like, oh, dang, I gotta play that. Yeah, I gotta get it at some point. But first, I gotta finish Fusion, and also, like, I don't want to get it right now because, <laughs> like, well, first off, first off, I don't want to play two Metroids back to back. But second, like, uh, it's kind of cursed that like I would have to spend 60 bones on it like i don't know it's probably worth 60 bones but <laughs> i don't just i, I can't i got it for less expensive right than that because uh i had a gift card that came with uh 
Uh, cruise and blast. <laughs> hey, there's a save um, point. Finally. <laughs> Progress. Progress. Can you rate my borp? It's pretty good. What if there was a mod that replaced Bugcat with Beanbug? That would be really something. What if there was a mod that raided my borp? <laughs> I have to, uh, like, what I'm playing, like, I've got Animal Crossing now that's taking a lot of focus. I've still been playing a lot of Plants vs. Zombies 2, doing the arena mode. Um, I've got WarioWare I'm still trying to finish. Um, I think I've got more than that. I've been playing the Nintendo 64 games. <laughs> Although I'm pretty much done with that for now, other than on my stream. <laughs> oh, you finally got around to playing it, Biss? Yay. Biss got around to playing what? Metroid Dread. Oh, Because they've cool. been talking about that for a while. They keep wanting to play it. How do they like it? Oh. Waiting to hear. Also, hi, Barry. Awesome. Let me look at my backloggery real quick. That'll remind me what I'm playing. Actually, no, it won't. Quite. Actually, I don't think I've listed the games I'm currently playing on there. Oops. Let me just look at my Switch. Yeah, it was WarioWare. I want to play more Mario Party Superstars. That's kind of about it, actually. I probably should start playing it soon. <laughs> Metroid Gen. I've got those DS games coming in, but they're, like, small. I got the two Club Penguin DS games, and uh, oh, I got Spore Creatures. A Boy and His Blob is out on the Switch. Really? I've heard good things about that game. What version of the game is it? Is it the Wii one? Yeah, it looks like the Wii version of the game. Way Forward's reimagining of David Crane's NES classic is a side-scrolling puzzle platform beloved by children and adults alike. I've heard really good things about a boy and his blob. Fifteen bucks, huh? I'll just put it on my wish list. Maybe I'll stream that someday. I've heard good things about the NES version, too. <laughs> There's also a game out on the Switch now that's called Still Sand, but at first I thought it said Shit Stain. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's a that's a title that they've put on Nintendo. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, do you like the game, Bist? How are you how are you feeling? What are what are your feelings on it without like saying anything direct about the game? Curious to know. Or did they say already and it just scrolled up off the top of the chat already? Okay, I finally made this jump. This is almost as annoying as the tentacle monster being there. Having this jump here. So there's the there's the nuts of this giant robot. Yeah, I've still only played the game for like a half hour. Like, uh, on my Switch, it just, like, it, it tells you how long you've played games for, right? On your profile. And for Metroid Dread, it just yeah. says, played for a little while. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't even tell me how long I played for it, because it was so short. So we want to get all the way over there. And it should be easier to do now that I'm saved over here. I got more time. 
We gotta do the maze in that in that nut. This is eh. I'm hoping it gets good. Really, I thought it, I enjoyed it like immediately. That's a demo, I think. Yeah, there's a demo now. Maybe I'll check that out. It gave me similar vibes to Soma immediately, which Arrow was a little bit surprised by. I thought it was funny because she's played both games. And I thought it was like clear similarity. But apparently it was just me. Just dang it. Rain World is really interesting, but it's very slow paced, so keep that in mind if you play it. Who are you talking to? Very awesome in the chat. It's such a good game. Yeah, I recommend it if you're okay with it being really slow and methodical. Well, then uh, I totally recommend Rain World then, <laughs> if you don't mind this. There's a lot of trial and error because, like, the creatures in the game are sort of randomly placed around. So you never know where they're going to be, and it's, like, it's different every time you play. So, like, sometimes they're in really inconvenient places, and it's kind of just impossible to get past them. And you just got to forfeit that attempt and try again next time. <laughs> Wow, it's got like armored mouth, so it didn't care that I threw that at it at all. Please. I hate this lizard. Gosh dang it, this lizard is a bean, and not the good kind. Oh. Not the jelly damn. variety. I've talked about before, bean can- beans can mean anything. Beans can be good or bad, and everything in between. I have to keep going right pat. oops. Oh my god! I lived! A bug cat is so talented. Good job, bug cat. You believe how talented this bug is? Very. You believe how talented this cat is? <laughs> I can't believe I lived. That was wild. Can, oh wait, there's a stick down. Get the stick. I got food in both hands. We're living large. Living life and loving it. Stick will get me out of here. If you live, you must carry stick. Sage. What was that? Did you say sage? Yep. Thank you. I've been re-listening to the music in Raymond Origins lately, and I'm really looking forward to playing that game again. All of that to still get caught by the lizard in the end. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Gosh dang lizard. I think it's cute when lizards are called just lizard. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't be using such an affectionate Early name for a lizard. lizard that's causing me so much pain. Ah! Yeah, that's because arrow cute. That's correct. Arrow cute moment. We called you cute, arrow. I hope you. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> We're giving you compliments.
<laughs> oh yeah, about the Among Us stream yesterday. I think it was I think it was extra entertaining. Um, at least to watch my recording of it because I didn't know how to play and was learning as I went along. <laughs> and you get to watch as I figure out how to play the game properly. <laughs> Personally, I thought it. I, I thought that it turned out to be a very entertaining video. <laughs> I loved it. Arrow says she appreciates I've, our compliments. I've been watching it. Oh, you've been watching my recording. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, mostly listening, but you know. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. There's not a whole lot to see. Shh, dang it! What, I didn't want to go in that pipe again, but the bug cat went in there. Sasha says, I really hope we can get Curling to work next time. Me too. Ash said he's going to skip streaming it himself next time and see if that fixes Curling. Right. Because there were some, there was a lot of funny rounds, but I think one of the funniest was just that first one where I was the imposter. And we had Curling on for that. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm way better at the game when I can actually talk to people while it's happening. I also, this this led me to discover that I'm very perceptive, at least when it comes to you and Sasha, because every time that you, either of you was the imposter, I correctly guessed it, like, almost immediately. <laughs> I was talking to Biss um. with that about that last, last night, and Biss was like, thankfully nobody believes you, though. <laughs> I'm not how good at getting people to believe tell? me. I don't know, I just, I just instinctually, it felt like you were the imposter and I was right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm very perceptive about you two, for some reason. I also, I've, I've correctly guessed who the imposter was most of the time, I think. I didn't always get it, but especially when it was you or Sasha, I was getting it. <laughs> Even without any evidence, just like, like any direct evidence, just somehow the way you were acting, I was picking up on. <laughs> well, there's a tentacle guy right there. And he's coming in! No, what? I didn't expect that! Oops! I was looking at the chat, waiting to decide what to do. And then I look back and the tentacle guy came through the pipe and ate me! Oh. I didn't even know he could do that. <laughs> I guess the benefit of not having Crew Link was I was able to give some exclusive, exclusive commentary in my recording. You get to hear my thoughts yeah. as I'm playing. Uh, otherwise. Ah, poop. I, I need to long jump on that. This game ain't easy, I'll give it that. There are no easy moments in Rain World, it's all like this. Yeah. Like, if you're just watching now, and like, you're not very familiar with this game, I'm gonna tell you, this is the whole game, basically. It's all this hard. This game doesn't ever let up on you. In fact, some of the hardest moments were way earlier. Like getting stuck in the septic tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, see, Sasha, I'm used to streaming by myself, so... Uh... I had plenty to say. I just sort of gave my thoughts as I was playing. And I mentioned sometimes when I thought somebody was the imposter and things like that. I, I've talked. I talked through my thought process. All right, making progress. We got past the lizard with no problems this time. I also had Arrow's chat open, so I was I was responding to chat messages in there as well, which was mostly just from Chroma. But 
When, when are when are the chat messages not mostly from Chroma? <laughs> Chroma is one of our best viewers. Chroma is pretty awesome. Yeah. I haven't been around as often lately, though. I've been around as... So it was nice. Oh. It was nice that they were there in the chat for Among Us. Yeah. How do I get across here? used the stick, but I think I'm doomed. Gosh dang it. <laughs> game is painful sometimes. Um, I'm probably not going to play for a super whole lot longer. It's because I have a movie to go to eventually. I should probably be done a bit before we have to go for that. So probably at, on the hour be done. Oh, just a few minutes. Well, this we'll see how this run goes. <laughs> there we go. I like doing these streams with you, Kessie, because they're very like casual, and have, yeah. we have a lot of conversation during them. Good conversation game. For sure. Apparently, I, I remember also people have mentioned I play this game a lot less fearfully than some people do. <laughs> like, a lot less cautiously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no fear in Rain World. Fearless girlfriend moment. <laughs> Oh hey, we've got a lot more viewers than earlier. We were down to one at one point, now we're up to seven. Pretty good. I mean, you know I'm a small streamer if I'm saying seven is good, but... <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny, my stream hasn't really grown much bigger than it was when I started. Because seven viewers was good when I started, and it's still good now, so... <laughs> I haven't started blowing up or anything yet. But there's pros and cons to having a small stream. Yeah. And my YouTube has been steadily growing, so that's good. Because the YouTube channel benefits from the streams because, you know, most of my videos are, are uh, stream uploads, so... As long as yeah. pe people keep watching them there, that's good too. So, <laughs> more people seem to watch them on YouTube than watch them live. So, I will keep up the channel. But I appreciate everybody who comes and watches stuff live too. You are very good and welcome, and you make the stream uh, better. Yeah. <laughs> Having people to talk to in the chat is always really nice. Yeah, we have a good chat. Yeah. It reminds me, I was just talking about not too long ago that, that uh, like, Vine Sauce doesn't stream very often anymore, but when he does, apparently... It's now a thing that he can't bring up NFTs because it causes huge arguments in his chat. First. Um, so I was just thinking about, well, gee, that's nice that uh, when it comes up on my stream, nobody throws a fit. <laughs> right. We all seem to be on the same page about them around here. Bugcat, score some goals. All this food, and I don't even need to eat it. 
Hey, look, I've actually managed to make it all the way around here. Oh, there's some, some brain nuggets for the bug cat over here. New arena's unlocked. It's so weird that there's an arena mode in this. Yeah, yeah finally really I, I unlocked a, a lizard to put in sandbox mode. I don't think I even have sandbox mode unlocked. Oh. I think I have the arenas. You can play arena mode. This is not the game I would have expected to have an arena mode. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Me either. It's a weird choice. I bet watching good players play it is wild, though. Yeah, because Bugcat has like a million moves. Yeah. Alright, progress has been made. Um, it can all be undone, of course, but I feel like progress in this game is just seeing a new place. Sometimes. Yeah. Not even reaching a new save point, just seeing someplace new is worthwhile. Uh, interesting. Just over here. I don't know how to continue getting over there, though. Getting over it with Bug Cat. <laughs> they can't possibly jump to that. That pole. Too far. And adding a... Adding a grabbable spot... Wouldn't help either because... Far away. Everything's too far. I can get over there. Arrow likes this place, apparently. It is interesting. Um... I think I'm stuck. I can't get back over where I was, and I can't go forward. It's just death. Dang. I thought this was progress, but... Well, I might be able to save myself with... Nope. Stick doesn't stick. Well... Goodbye, bug cat. <laughs> That's the end of this run. Nope. Crouch jump is too low. Didn't get up because he had to go up and over. Dang. Let's consult the map for a minute here. This place is beans. In a bad way. Beans derogatory. Arrow says I should have studied that movement tree better. <laughs> Thanks. I figured out how to get over there, but then, uh... Stuck. Yeah, that's like an impossible place to navigate. Hey, Elena. Yeah. You ever go to the library and just touch all the books? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't say that I have. Why not? You could become a bookworm if you touch all the books later. <laughs> I'm already a bookworm. Oh. Remember the game Bookworm? On yeah. PopCap? That got removed from every service for some reason? You're crawling around in a book, Elena? Yeah. I don't know. This is this area is really tough. Cuz there's nowhere else to reach other than over there. Like everything's just kind of going that way, you know. There's no other paths. Some of these areas I've explored extremely thoroughly. There's up there. I don't know how you would get up there. Nothing leads there. We're not we're not getting anywhere more on this stream. This is this is it for this stream. Um because I probably should be done now. And we've streamed for a couple hours, which is pretty good. Um I feel like we we did make progress today. There's no denying that. But this game is this game is slow, isn't it? 
Yeah. Wonder how many hours I have in it. Let me check on Steam. Let's see. I have 26 hours in this game so far. And I don't know how long to expect it to continue. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Santa denier seething right now. Being Vincent. Imagine being a Santa denier. Well. You're not a Santa denier, right, Ali? Um, no more questions. You're not implying you're a Santa denier, are you? <laughs> what What about my thing that I say where Santa arises from his tomb every Christmas to every Christmas Eve <laughs> to deliver presents? The tomb of Santa. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is you better not be a Santa denier. <laughs> Sasha says she was watching back when she managed to convince you that I was the imposter and that made her win the round. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cursed round with the sliver. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> hey. Well, thanks everybody for watching. This is a really this was really fun. I love these Rain World streams, guys. They... Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> oh, Sasha has done the Wario quote. Santa Claus is, is not real and Jesus did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday. And hopefully you will be too, Cassie, because you said you wanted to join Undertale streams. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to play... Um, I want to play. Probably do Psychonauts too, on Sunday as well. It'll be Psychonauts two and Undertale. It's a, that's a hell of a combo. <laughs> and then Tuesday will be Super Mario sixty four and Psychonauts two. And then Thursday will be Soma with Arrow, and Psychonauts two or Super Mario sixty four. Not sure. And then Friday will be this again. So. Hooray! Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Cassie, for joining. It's been really fun. Good. Nice. As always. Thanks for stream. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Say goodbye, Cassie. Bye-bye. <laughs>